What is going on everyone and welcome to Limassol, Cyprus. Today is our first port of call on our seven night Mediterranean cruise through the Greek Isles on MSC Musica. Now last week's video was our travel and embarkation for the cruise and while it was interesting and a little bit strange, you haven't seen anything yet, I promise. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And if you have any questions about MSC or cruising or even exploring a little bit of Europe, make sure to leave them down below so we can answer them and get back to you. It's beautiful here. And you know, it's really kind of crazy because leading up to this Greek slash med cruise slash flying into Israel, we kind of expected it to be really, really warm. And this morning it's actually very cool. Uh, it's really, really nice. The sun is, uh, it's kind of breaking through the clouds, but it's not super hot. So today we are doing a tour uh, that we have booked through MSC. We have a really short time here in Limassol. So I figured that if we were gonna get out and go see something, it would probably be best for us to do it directly through the cruise line so that we don't risk the, uh, you know, the, the fear of kind of like missing the ship if for some reason something happens. You know, doing it with a tour through the cruise line will help us to get back and the ship will wait for us if something goes wrong. So I'm pretty excited. It's beautiful. It does look like it might be raining out that way, but we'll find out and see. So let's go have some fun. So before we uh, hop off of the ship today, which uh, with our tour excursion, uh, with MSC, it is at 9.45. So we have a little bit of time to kill here. And so uh, the debacle that was embarkation day yesterday, uh, we didn't really get to walk around and explore the ship whatsoever. Uh, and so we're kind of doing that this morning, uh, just a little bit. Uh, and we'll probably be touring the ship, I think throughout the week, piecemeal, you know, periodically, like when we have the opportunity, we'll go and check something else. So that's what we're doing right now. So I can only speculate today that we might be on one of these buses taking us out to do our tour. We actually have a bus number on our tickets. And we'll mention this uh, a few times throughout our series here, but this cruise is very different than any cruise that we've been on so far, where you can embark and disembark uh, the ship at every single port. So what I mean by uh, embarking and disembarking, because you might be like, Josh, you do that every single time you go to a port. Um, this cruise is actually like, I guess what they kind of call like inner ports, where you literally can embark or disembark at each port to start your cruise. So we started in Haifa, but there might be people today disembarking here from Limassol, uh, and that's the conclusion of their cruise. They've done it for seven nights. They embarked here, they're disembarking here. Uh, we're gonna be stopping at Athens, same thing. Uh, even in uh, Kusadesi, I think, in Turkey, same thing. So it's a little bit different and a little strange, and I think it makes for the embarkation experience be very different than what you might be uh, used to if you've done a lot of sailings out of the United States uh, in different ports where they have a dedicated terminal with security and staff to uh, to handle that. So a little strange. Embarkation, like I said, go back and watch it from yesterday. Uh, it was odd. Yeah, it's kind of crazy that uh, the ship so far has not felt very busy for um, a cruise that I think with occupancy rates has been a little strange and odd. And that might be due to the nature of the cruise because that you are embarking and disembarking passengers at many different places. So we've made it through the first night. This is my first real experience with jet lag. I think we were also like hustling to get here because the ship was rocking, not rocking to the point that I was sick, but just like rocking to the point that like I was constantly moving and I felt like I could not go back to sleep. Do not get a room on deck 12. That's where we're at. It seems on like this ship in particular. It, it seems, yeah, I mean, on this ship in particular, it just seems like since six o'clock this morning, they've just been moving chairs nonstop up here, or that like people are just like I don't know running or something. It's really strange. So we're kind of touring inside and out together, taking a look at the map. I'm over trying here. to figure out like where everything is. But we literally come out around from the elevators, and here it is, the game of games, the quarter push. I will, I will probably come back in here and play a little bit. So it's all MSC coins, so you'll have to get your MSC tokens, but still really cool. And it's not like one of those gypsy kind of crazy ones where you just you just put the coins in, they fall straight down. So I'm kind of excited. We made our way to the theater. Uh, on most cruise lines, excursions through the cruises typically meet in the theater and then escort you off the ship. And everything in the theater here was announced in multiple languages. Uh, and when you book your excursions through MSC, you can actually choose your preferred language because there are several different ones. And this tour that we took was actually in English and Spanish, and they did both at the same time. 
So we've made it onto uh, the bus. Uh, this is kind of just like a regular charter bus that we're going to be taking. It's a large group. There is, uh, I guess maybe just this full bus, but we'll see. Um, I will say that the first thing that was a little different from other excursions that we've done is that there wasn't any real direction once we got off the ship. We got off the ship and it was just kind of like... Well, I also think we just didn't know who we were looking for. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, that could be the case too. So for this one, we're looking for orange shirts when we get off of the ship. Those will be people who are going to have information on excursions and where to go. Um, and uh, so just look for them. Look for MSE crew members with orange shirts on. So we're on the bus and going to start the excursion as soon as we get going. That's not uncommon. English speaking to me, Spanish to my colleague. <laughs> oh, this is pretty cool. Yeah, it is. Oh, look out over there. So we've uh, got the the little tour done, I think, here in the castle, which is pretty cool. We're up yes. on the very top kind of, of it. Kind of self-guided. She gave us some information at the bottom. Yeah, but it's interesting that, like, it didn't really serve any real, like, uh, the castle didn't. The castle didn't really serve any purpose for like war or anything like that. It was literally just here from what she said. Oh, wow, it went strong. Um, just for them to like recruit and recuperate basically. And they uh, ended up making this wine, which I don't know if we're going to get to try any, but um, still, it's kind of just like a cool place to see. I love seeing like these ancient structures that were built, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Um, this one's actually a couple thousand years old. So it's kind of nice just to get up and get to see it and walk around and tour. And, Again, the cost of this excursion wasn't really that expensive. So, um, and it guarantees us to get here, tour it, see it, and get back to the ship and not have to worry about anything. So it is a pretty cool place. All right, so we uh, had very little time here, which is kind of surprising. We only had like 20 minutes to walk around and look at it. So we didn't get to see much, but again, there's really like not that much to see. So I think now we're gonna head to the uh, viticulture area. We're gonna go to the museum, get to taste a little bit of wine, which I believe is included. And the only thing that we're taking from there Two bottles of water and a Snickers. It cost me two euros for this. So that's it. That's it. Oh wow! Yeah, I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. Okay. So we have made it to the wine museum. We're gonna tour the museum, and then we are gonna get to try the wine at the end. Uh, there's also a little little kikiti running around here. <laughs> this part of the tour I felt was a little misleading. While it did indicate that we would learn about the winemaking process, I thought we would actually see that in person. Uh, unfortunately, it was just pictures on the wall with some artifacts and somebody just kind of explaining what the process is, which is really not anything different than I could just read online. So the museum here, I think, in my opinion, is very misleading. There's no real winemaking going on here. It's really just a straight up not even really a museum in my opinion, uh, but it just is a building where you can try some wine. I can give you the taste of the if you like. Oh wow, it is. It has a super sweet like aroma and scent to it. And it's like uh, almost like a honey, but it is very like raisin, like raisin heavy as far as like a taste goes. They said that they don't normally drink this like as a regular wine. They usually have it before dinner or after dessert. And I can kind of see why, just because of how sweet and like strong is yeah yeah and i think they said it was like 15 percent uh by volume so is that a little he more heavy on the on the wine side i don't know because i don't drink that much wine but it's not bad i mean i could certainly drink a glass of it i think before dinner or after dessert so just like a quick thing here of what we've gotten to see so far it's been kind of cool again i like this excursion i mean it's not like it's uh, heavily detailed we're not getting to really maybe dive deep into a lot of like cultural history stuff on our own. Um, and the tour sections are pretty short, but it's kind of nice because it gives you like this quick little uh, tidbit or this like quick little piece of the history here in Cyprus. 
So the wine museum here was really interesting. They can You can also buy bottles of wine in their wire there, but just keep in mind that you can't open them on the ship. So if you purchase them to take on the ship, you won't get them until actually you uh, disembark at the end of your cruise. So. So I was uh, I was kind of thinking that like maybe this place wasn't kind of taken care of or was kind of left abandoned with uh, with time and how you know different cultures take over and, and whatnot. But actually, this whole place uh, was actually destroyed in uh, the mid fourth century A.D. by a large earthquake. And so after that, they just kind of abandoned it and and uh, never came back to really kind of fix it up. So uh, it's kind of a shame that that's what happened and they never went back to fix it because it would have been really cool to kind of see exactly what this place was like back then and you know the structures itself and, and how well that they were built, which obviously weren't built to withstand earthquakes and that makes sense on stone structures that don't have a lot of flexibility, but um, all in all, so like it's really just kind of cool to get to see and experience a little bit of different stuff that uh, you know, obviously we don't get to see in the States whatsoever because our culture only dates back like a couple hundred years. So um, kind of cool, but we're gonna wrap things up here and uh, head back to the ship. Well, we have had almost a full day now on the ship, being that it is about uh, 5.30 local time here on the ship. And it's been quite an interesting day. We're trying to find some place to go take a photo before dinner. because that's like a big kind of thing for Taylor. She always likes to take a photo of us dressed up. Um, but what's really weird is that the outside deck that's uh, located just outside of deck seven uh, is completely closed off. So they're not letting anybody go outside. Uh, so we could oh, go up on to- On deck seven. On deck seven, yeah, yeah. We could go all the way up to the top deck, but it might be like really windy up there. And so now we saw this staircase the other day and we're trying to find it again and we can't find it. Like we just don't know like what happened to it or like where it went. I mean, it didn't go anywhere. We just don't know where it is. We can't find it. You'll know when you see it. I believe it. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. Huh? It's right here. Oh my gosh. That's okay, the blender's going? It's fine. <sighs> I think the blender sums up a little bit of... How it's going. Yeah. Yeah. So we finally found that staircase, got the photo and little video clips that I wanted to get. It's right over here. Uh, we walked the whole way to the other end of the ship and then came back and found it. Uh, it's actually in the casino Which where, where we, we started mm -hmm. our search for the staircase. But now we're sitting in Il Tucano which is one of the many lounges on the ship. And all the lounges are like really big and spacious. Um, yeah, we got some drinks. I got a margarita with no salt, but it has salt. <laughs> that it does. But Josh was kind enough to get the salt off for me in one spot, so I'm able to drink it. It's just been a weird experience for us. And I don't know if it's like a cultural thing or what, like I'm just, I think maybe I'm just trying to find an excuse for maybe why it just seems off for us. But like a lot of the staff members just haven't been very like, I don't know, anything. Um, I will say that like most of the time, the staff that we've dealt with, um, usually at the bars has been like the best, but this guy over here at the bar is like, Kind of like, oh, I have to like make you a drink. So uh, it's just been a little weird and it's a little odd. I still really love the design of this ship. Um, I really like it. It's lacking in a few areas, but I still really enjoy it. I think it's a really nice ship uh, so far. And that's only really having a like, you know, about a whole day on the ship considering that we didn't get on yesterday until like 4.30. But uh, so we're gonna go back to dinner tonight uh, on deck six at 6.30. And uh, I don't know what we're gonna do afterwards because what's really also interesting and kind of odd that there are no activities on board. So, you know, normally- well, There's not none, there's just not very there, many. There's really not though. It's like, normally like, again, we'd like, would go to trivia or there might be bingo or some type of game show. Um, but it seems like tonight they're just doing like a lot of dancing, some live music, uh, and that's really about it. Not a lot of games. And that might also be because of like the language barriers, so. Gin and tonic, which was quick and easy to make. That's all I have. 
Oh my god, they gave you a table? I told them Yay. not to. Can I told them not to. I was like, <laughs> they, they were trying to take it away, but they did give yeah, it away. I was like, yeah. Yeah. where are you sitting? We're uh, actually we're the on the other side of the corner. restaurant. Because I tried to get Ted. To oh, sorry. All right, tonight in the dining room is the Mediterranean night. Ooh. Yum, the first thing on the menu we're both probably getting is the fried calamari and shrimp. So good. Does I, look good. I think I'm going to get lasagna for my entree. I was kind of between a few things, but lasagna sounds good because it does have a bechamel sauce. I'm really tor torn between the seafood paella and the Mediterranean style mixed seafood grill. I can't see paella without thinking of Desperate Housewives. I can't see paella without the thinking of... The very first episode ever. Oh, I can't think of it without thinking of uh, the restaurant at Disney Springs. Oh, yes. And then uh, dessert tonight. Taylor said I would really like these uh, chocolate uh, pro pro profiteroles, profiteroles, which I wouldn't at all. I don't like which are... puff pastries. No, it's um, not puff pastries. Or uh, cream puff. Cream puff. Yeah, that's what I mean. But uh, I think I might go with the baklava again. I'll probably get the tiramisu tonight. I should go with the fresh fruit plate, but that baklava last night was pretty good. So I don't, I can't remember if we mentioned this at all yesterday, but they do always have these things available over here. So we've got a pasta of the day, um, and they have two different types, one with a tomato sauce and one with a cream sauce. Uh, I'm surprised Taylor doesn't want to get that uh, air cured beef. I had it last night, it was very good. Um, and then we've got a salmon, they've got steak and grilled chicken breast. So pretty, pretty typical for a cruise line to have a chicken steak and fish dish every night for you to choose from so and again we've got wines down here that you can choose from wines uh oh yeah taylor Cheers. taylor's got a some prosecco prosecco <laughs> so i don't remember if we mentioned this but what? our drink package includes anything that's nine dollars or less yes so we have like the easy package i think it is i think so yeah so like this Pinot Grigio, that's $12, we would have to pay $3 extra. For the difference. Yes. I kind of want to see if they have any reasons. So we've got bread tonight as well, uh, which I always love about coming to sit down for dinner. And uh, they had a couple of different options to choose from. I just went with a, what is this called again? Focaccia. Oh, that's right, focaccia. Last night they didn't serve butter. Now you could ask for butter and they would bring it to you. But tonight, because it's Mediterranean, they're actually serving with some olive oil. Oh, and it, it does smell very uh, fragrant and good. So I'm kind of excited. I, I do really love some good bread with good olive oil. Uh, getting a little worked up because I'm excited. Let it soak up all that goodness. Except I'm going to need like the whole bottle of olive oil. <laughs> oh, our club. I really, uh, ever since our river cruise, I know we talk about it all the time, I apologize, but it was just such an awesome trip. It was, it was a great, great trip. It was. But uh, I've really been enjoying Riesling a lot more. So I just wanted- just wine in general? Well, wine in general, but I really enjoy like a glass of Riesling, especially at dinner. So I uh, wanted to see if they had any that was included in our drink package. Uh, and they have one bottle of Riesling. It is the uh, Moselle uh, region. And um, we were there. And we were there, yeah. And it's uh, eight dollars a glass of wine, or thirty-two dollars for the bottle, which is which really is not, not, bad. not that bad. Um, but they've got it, so they must not sell it very much, though, because the the uh, our server? our server was like, "What? Huh?" So I had to show him. So hopefully, hopefully they have it, and it's good. So I think he's coming with it right now, actually. Cheers. Oh, that's a, oh, that's okay. Oh, that's okay. Thank you, though. Thank you. Do you like it? Oh, that is good. It's like brings back the River Cruise memories. It's crisp, it's light, it's refreshing. I love it. The Moselle region Rieslings are the best. They're good. <laughs> I'll be getting that probably the rest of the cruise. You probably will. All right, so we've got our uh, frito misto, basically, so our uh, fried seafood. Now, what's really interesting is that, uh, so we've got our calamari, which is just the rings. Uh, they're getting a little soft, but the shrimp are not breaded and fried, which I thought was kind of interesting. And what I actually kind of like is that instead of breading uh, like the zucchini, they've actually made it chips uh, and fry them instead. And I actually kind of like that. 
Mm, I like that though. I think that's better. One thing that I think this is missing already, a sauce. I thought that too. Like an aioli or something like that. But oh no, I think it looks pretty good. How is it, Taylor? It's not too bad. They need flavor. Salt, pepper. Salt and pepper in the breading. All right, so our main courses have arrived. And uh, what's kind of cool is that I had, I was kind of torn between the paella and the seafood grill. And our server said, hey, you know what? Get the seafood grill and I'll bring the paella out for you guys to share. And Taylor's got a lasagna, which does look pretty good. Yes. Dive on in. Come try it out. I've never been a huge fan of lasagna. I like a good lasagna, so we'll see. It says it has bechamel sauce, so. It does look like it does. Pretty good? It is actually. Got the prawn. It's not bad. Looks like it might almost be like a little watery. More brothy maybe. Yeah, yeah, brothy. But uh, it's still good. It has good flavor to it, I think. So, so we're on a dessert. And I will say that for the most part, I, the dinner the last two nights has been pretty good. Um, Dessert last night I went baklava. Tonight I've got baklava because I really don't like a lot of the menu items tonight. If there was one item on the entire list that I would never ever get, ever, it's those. You have to we, one. I mean, we have a, a really nice server. He's a great guy. Uh, he's trying to expand, I think, our experience. This is just gonna make me sick. Now, this part of the video I really debated on adding, but here we go. I mentioned earlier that with a tour, you are normally escorted off the ship, but today arriving in Mykonos, we have only about five hours. And when it was time to finally disembark, it became a complete and total nightmare. And as you can see that this where we're at is kind of a line. It's not a real line, but it is some form of what would appear to be organization to start with. But the thing is, and what you can't see, and what this guy is doing right now, is what soon became this issue of just people who didn't want to wait, and they just started pushing by everybody. And over here to the right part of the screen, there are people who are trying to form another line to try and get past and get off the ship even faster. And just ahead is an elevator shaft where people are also trying to form another line. And so none of the people who are working on the ship are trying to help organize or keep anything organized. It is uh, slowly becoming chaotic. But it didn't become really bad until we got into the bottleneck area here just before getting to the stairway. Where it just started turning into people pushing and shoving left and right. And for the first time ever that we've ever been on a cruise, we actually did not feel safe uh, for fear of being either trampled over or pushed down, punched, anything like that. This did really turn into something else. But it got to the point where I was just trying to let people kind of go by us who were also trying to stay in a group because I figured no point in trying to fight with anybody. We're all going to get off the ship anyways. And it just other people were getting upset because then I was letting some people go by. But we were just trying to stay together. And in retrospect, this is something where we should have just gotten off individually and just said, hey, we'll meet off the ship. Now, something else worth noting here is the fact that there really wasn't any security anywhere to be seen. Uh, Jake was actually yelling for some security, but there wasn't any, uh, nor did we ever see anybody who you could identify as somebody for security. So uh, it was very scary. And the people ahead of us were actually making some uh, very serious threats uh, against us, which was just, like I said, this was absolutely mind blowing. And MSC did really nothing at all to try and change or control the situation. Uh, so we were just really kind of taken aback. and. I, I don't know. This was just, you know, like the, the hair on our skin was standing up and we were like all nervous, full of anxiety. So this was just really an unfortunate incident and something that probably could have been very easily controlled uh, if a little bit of effort by the crew members would have taken place. 
And after all of that craziness, to be honest with you, it really kind of killed the vibe for me to try and make any sort of video here in Mykonos, uh, mostly because one, uh, we didn't really get to have much time here anyways. Uh, and you know, two, I mean, just that whole situation was just really scary, but, but one caveat to this whole thing was what was really kind of supposed to make this trip very special uh, and really cool. And the real reason kind of why we tagged along with Marianne and her uh, rowdy crowd. Uh, and that was to capture a very, very special uh, moment for uh, her daughter, Dina, and her girlfriend, Gabby, uh, here in Mykonos. Yeah, so it ended up being a really great way to kind of cap off the night and uh, end the day with a more positive note that uh, was, you know, it's always really great to capture little moments like these. And that's the whole, the whole reason why we started uh, JTR Media, you know, as uh, for us was so that we can capture moments like this and which is always a great uh, place for me to just do a shameless sponsor for ourselves. But uh, that was really it for Mykonos. We did go and eat dinner. We didn't record any video because, again, like I said, I was still a little shaken from uh, being on the ship. Uh, we did have maybe a few minutes to walk around Mykonos um, and check out uh, a little bit of the shops, but not very much before we had to make our way back to the ship and, uh, you know, go to sleep so that we could get ready for our next big day, which was Athens. <laughs>